I'm Dr. Tanya Harrison, and I like to call myself a professional Martian because I work on rocks and robots on the Red Planet for a living. And I managed to find a way to do so that ties in another passion in my life, photography. When I was a kid, I saw the movie Big Bird in Japan, where our beloved yellow friend meets Kaguya Heime, the Japanese princess of the moon. And I was utterly fascinated by this. And after watching it, I went outside every clear night. Granted, that's not necessarily very often if you grow up in Seattle. But I went out every, every night to stare at the moon. And I realized over time, when I would go out and stare at the sky, that it wasn't actually the stars that caught my attention, but rather the little points of light that were the other worlds in our solar system. To think that we had spaceships watching the things that went on on these other worlds absolutely captivated me. And then in 1997, NASA landed a mission called Pathfinder on Mars. Pathfinder unfolded like a robotic flower, and out of it drove a shoebox-sized rover called Sojourner, the first rover that humans had ever sent to another planet. The Pathfinder lander captured a series of images of Sojourner driving off the lander platform and onto the surface of Mars. And NASA released these, in, these images as an animated GIF back in 1997, before animated GIFs were all over the internet. And I was hooked. I could not believe that we had the ability to put a robot on top of a rocket, launch it toward a moving target 140 million miles away, land that robot in a specific place on that moving target, and command that robot to not only conduct scientific investigations of specific rocks, but of specific pieces of those rocks on that moving target 140 million miles away. That blew my mind. It still blows my mind, even now that I work on these rovers on Mars every day. And I knew firmly, thanks to Sojourner, that I wanted to be involved in space exploration and specifically involved in Mars. So skip ahead 10 years, a couple of college degrees, and dozens of emails to Mars scientists begging for jobs. And I ended up working for a NASA subcontractor that built most of the cameras that we've ever sent to the Red Planet. I was brought on as a targeting specialist for the context camera on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. And this was a really interesting mix of photography and science as far as the job was concerned. It was my job to pick what the camera would take pictures of each day while taking photographic basics into account, like lighting and composition. And after weeks of training, I finally got to target my first image of Mars. When that image came back to Earth, it was an overwhelming feeling. Knowing that I was the first human to ever see this little piece of Mars like this. For a brief moment, I had a very intimate relationship with this tiny bit of Mars, and it was beautiful. Even though I'd looked at thousands of images of Mars before that point, the feeling of looking at an image that I had taken was entirely different because it was the culmination of years of dreams and hard work all coming together in the form of this single photograph. And for the next few years, I got to experience this intimate relationship with Mars on a daily basis. Every day I would come into work in the morning and I would get to look at the pictures that we had taken with the context camera the day before. And I was often the first human to ever see these pictures. And that's an almost indescribable feeling. It's kind of like getting to see Star Wars before anyone else on the planet. <laughs> so I would hope that you would know that looking at a photograph versus taking a photograph or seeing something for yourself is, are very different things. For example, the feeling that I got from looking at images of the Northern Lights did not prepare me at all for the overwhelming sense of emotion and wonder that I felt at seeing them in person for the first time. Or the reactions that I see from people when they look at Cassini images of Saturn. These are truly stunning images that definitely elicit a reaction from people. But the audible reaction from people when they look through a telescope and see Saturn and its rings with their own eyes for the first time is a whole nother level. People gasp. They exclaim, oh wow. They smile and go back to the telescope eyepiece for more. So now, let me let you in on a little secret. You don't have to work for NASA to get this sense of wonder or to explore the cosmos for yourself. You can even help NASA explore the universe. You can target your own images of Mars right now with a camera orbiting the red planet called High Rise. 
through their website, High Wish. You can pick what pieces you'd like to take pictures of on Mars, and they'll send you an email when those pictures have been taken. Meanwhile, on the Martian surface, amateur image processors create stunning mosaics of images from the Mars rovers, whose raw images are released to the public on a daily basis on NASA's website. Farther out in the solar system, NASA has specifically called for help from the public in processing images from the Juno spacecraft at Jupiter to help us understand the mystery and beauty of the largest planet in our solar system. And if you have a telescope and a lot of patience, you might even be able to discover a comet that will bear your name for the rest of human history. So you too can join in on the emotional journey of data, of discovery. Through Aurorasaurus, a citizen science project to help us better understand the Northern Lights, amateur astronomers help discover a new type of aurora that has been officially named Steve. <laughs> it's not even an acronym, it's just called Steve. <laughs> you can help scientists explore through another project called Zooniverse, which has 81 separate projects right now spanning everything from space to literature to medicine. You can help scientists discover planets around other stars or map out features on the surface of Mars. If space isn't your thing, you can help scientists learn how to fight antibiotic resistant bacteria, or you can help us uh, learn more about Earth's climate history by reading through uh, climate records from 19th century sailing ships. You can even help scientists understand changes in penguin populations through the Penguin Watch program. I mean, who wouldn't want to look at pictures of adorable penguins all day? If you can count how many penguins are in this image, you can science. Through projects like these, you can help us understand Earth, humanity, and our place in the universe by contributing to human knowledge. The mysteries of the universe are out there for anyone to unlock, where the sky is truly limitless. Thank you. <laughs>